Hello everybody, my name is Kevin Sheets. I'm a junior music education major at Westchester University and I'm going to be teaching you the trombone over the next few weeks. So today we're going to take a look at level one scales, the half scales. We're going to take a look at the B flat major scale. Uh, before we get started on this, I just want to go over a few uh, technical things that I like to work on as I'm playing and going through this. So the first is the slide grip. We want to make sure that we're using a nice comfortable grip. Um, slide grip may be different from person to person, whatever is more comfortable. What, what I like to do and what works best for a lot of musicians is thinking about, um, we're not even going to worry about the horn yet, um, thinking about extending your hand to shake somebody's hand. If you were to extend your arm out to shake somebody's hand, um, notice how your arm is kind of straight but it's relaxed, your wrist is out, your palm is open. It's a very relaxed uh, position to be in. When you go from down here out to here to shake somebody's hand, it's a rather comfortable position to be in. So we're going to stay out here. I want you to put your fingers together. I want you to pull back your ring and your pinky finger. <coughs> Excuse me. Pull back your pinky and ring finger. Keep these two fingers together and your thumb up. And I want you to bring your thumb and your fingers to kind of meet halfway um, and put your the pads of your pointer and your middle finger together with the pad of your thumb. Okay? So just go ahead and hang out there. You can bend your wrist in a little bit. If you keep it straight out, it's going to have some tension on your wrist. So find that sweet point. It's not too far in, not too far out, but where it's most relaxed. Okay? This is kind of how we're going to hold our slide when we're playing. Okay, so let's go back to first position. We're going to go back to first position. Our arm is in, relaxed. Our wrist is straight. You want to make sure that your wrist is very loose. You don't want to hold it too tight. Uh, you don't want it to be entirely arm. So just go ahead and maybe move your wrist back and forth a little bit. Just kind of get, get used to how that feels. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice. We're going to go from first position. Uh, and the B flat. So think about the first two notes of the B flat scale. We have a B flat, and then we have a C out in sixth. What we're going to do is we're going to just going to practice that feeling of going from first position B flat out to C. And as you go out, you want to extend your arm out, but you also want to let your wrist go with it. So your wrist is kind of going to it's going to be a little flick of the wrist as you go out and then your arm is going to help you get out to that sixth position. So everybody go ahead and practice that on your own. Just first position, sixth position, back to first, back to sixth, and back to first, back to sixth, and back to first. So now let's apply that to the trombone. So we're going to use the same, you're going to keep your hand the same way. You want to put your middle finger, the bottom of your middle finger right here on the outer part of this grip right here on the slide okay you can keep your pointer finger attached to them okay it's going to help with the grip of the uh, this first little bar here and then put your thumb on the back end okay on the back end of the grip right here okay and then you can hold it whatever way is comfortable but go ahead and just try and use that same wrist motion and arm motion okay just kind of get how that feels uh, it's going to be a little different if you're used to holding it a different way but this is going to be a very relaxed way to move the slide. Uh, it's going to have less tension overall in your body and in your lips while you play and in your arm as you find the right notes to play. Okay, so just go ahead and practice the B-flat first position out to C, B-flat, C, B-flat, C, B-flat. And you can continue to practice that as I talk. Um, so this really helps me out as a player. Uh, because when you're playing faster passages, like let's say you have to play a faster B flat scale uh, and you can't get the notes to come out or you can't quite get out in time because you're moving your wrists or it's a really fast passage, uh, this really helps out relax, relaxing overall so you can get those notes more flexible. You're, you are more flexible to get those notes and uh, you have less tension playing so it sounds easier. So for example, uh, 
I was very relaxed to motion there. It took a little bit for my chops to kick in, but that's okay. Um, I'm very relaxed to motion as I move the slide from the B flat to the C. So if I would have a passage like that, it would be very easy. Um, not a lot of stress on me as a player. So we're going to get into the scales now. I know I've been just talking your ear off, but we're going to try and practice that proper technique of holding the slide as we move into the scale exercise, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start in the beginning of the concert B flat half scale. And if you notice here, there's no articulation mark, there's no slur mark, so we're just going to play with a nice da. Okay, a nice da articulation. Da 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 da. Okay, so just listen to me. See if you can match my articulation first to try and listen, see how I'm doing it, and then we're gonna play it together. Okay? So here's just the first measure. <laughs> Practice that on your own and pause the video if you need to and then we'll play it together when you're ready. Okay, and we're going to play it together from the beginning. So we're going to start on that B flat and we're going to play it together. Here we go. I'll give you, excuse me, I'll give you four counts uh, prep and on the fourth beat we're going to take a breath. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Good, let's do it one more time. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, very nice, very nice. You want to make sure that the, the notes, here we go, get the music back. You want to make sure that the notes aren't entirely separated, like you don't want a lot of space in between there. They aren't legato, they aren't connected, but they should have some length to them. The notes should have some length to them. It should not be or even you can hear that there's a separation in there. We don't want that. We want each note to be connected, but we don't want them to bleed into each other. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next measure. Well, let's take a look at the next two measures. So we're going to start on that F in first position. F, E flat in third, D in fourth, C in sixth, B flat. So as you can see there, it's a legato. There's a slur mark over all of those notes. So we're going to make sure that we use our legato tongue there. We want to connect all of those notes. So how I said we wanted there to be no space in the notes prior, da, 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 da. We want to make sure that we give all of these quarter notes the entire length, the entire uh, duration uh, that these quarter notes have, and that we want to make sure that we move our slide very swiftly, okay? We want to make sure that we have a quick slide motion, but not jarred. We don't want it to shake the horn. Um, we want to make sure that it's very nice and smooth, very easy, and if you listen to me, I'll play it for you, uh, and then you can pause the video and give it a shot for yourself, and then we'll play it together. Okay, so this is starting on the second measure on the F. <laughs> the video and give that a shot for yourself. Okay, so now we're going to play it together. So one thing that we can think about as we're playing this together is what kind of articulation do we really use? I know you said legato tongue, but what does that really mean? You said da for both, so what were you trying to say? So what I think about, um, what I think about uh, when, you're, when you're using legato tongue is you want to definitely use da, 
you don't want to use anything like ta because that's a little too harsh. Um, but you want to think about maybe giving that articulation mm, maybe 60 to 70 percent of what you would in the prior notes that we played earlier in the first measure. Um, so instead of doing da 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 da, you want to da 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 da. Here I was a little less strong on those articulations. Listen again. So here's the stronger ones. Da 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 da. And this is the legato. Da 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 da. So you want to think about doing that. So let's just play those four notes together and then we'll talk about another thing and then we'll go into the full phrase, okay? So let's start on those F. Let's go from the F to the C together. Thinking about that lighter articulation. Here we go. And one, two, three. <sighs> thing before we put these last two measures together and it's going from the C to the B flat so I know it says slur and you want to make sure you're slurred and we were talking about the articulations but as you probably are aware the trombone has different partials um, and different um, harmonics that are on those different partials so when you play a C to a B flat they're only you know one whole step apart but they're going to be on different partials and when you go from partial to partial you don't necessarily need to articulate if you're slurring it if you're articulating if you're um let's say you have a staccato passage uh, and you play a c to a b flat then yes you're going to need to but if you're legato tonguing and if you are that's just going to be a little more work to, art to articulate that than it would be just to not articulate it at all. So that means you're going from the C to the B flat without using any tongue. Go ahead and give that a shot on your own. Just kind of see how that feels. And also work on that um, wrist and the arm motion, the relaxed motion as you go from the C to the B flat. So go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, pause the video and work on that for a little bit and then resume it when you're ready. Okay, so now we have that down. We want to work on the full measure. So starting on that F going to the B flat, thinking about the legato tongue and thinking about not using any articulation going from the C to the B flat. Okay, here we go. We're going to start on that F. And one, two, three. <sighs> So let's start at the top. We're going to run through it twice. And we're going to think about having a nice relaxed arm as we go through. And we want to think about the articulations and the differences in the articulations. So one thing we can think about is having a stronger articulation in the first measure because it's not slurred, so it's not legato tonguing. Um, another thing we can work on or think about is when we get to the second measure and we have the slur marking. We want to think about using a lighter articulation and using faster slide to go from note to note. And then third thing we think about is going from the C to the B flat, not using any articulation. Okay. So we're going to do from the beginning, we're going to go up the scale and down the scale, and then we're going to take a break and then we're going to do it one more time. All right, here we go. So from the beginning on that B flat, here we go. One, two, Okay, take a little break. Analyze what you did. Think about if you got the right articulations in, 
Uh, think about if your slide was fast enough. Think about if you're too stiff with your wrist or your arm. And then we're going to play it one last time. Here we go. Let's make this the best time. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, nice job, everybody. So hopefully that helped clear up a little bit about um, playing and moving your slide. Um, the, the concepts we talked about today, uh, you can apply them to any sort of other aspect of your playing, whether it's in your ensemble music, your band music, um, if you're getting ready to go into marching band, uh, if you sing at all, um, if you are in any church groups or any other organizations, this all can apply to any other scenario that you play the trombone in. So I want to talk to you guys about another thing that um, I wish I heard when I was younger. Um, it's the importance of etudes and working on different music outside of just the band room. Now, the music that you work on with your teachers and your maybe your private instructors, um, they're all really, really, really good um, ways to develop great musicianship skills and listening. Um, but it's really important that you work on music. That's not just something that you do for maybe 45 minutes in school. Um, don't get me wrong, I like playing band excuse me, band music, um, and I loved playing band music in high school with all my friends. It was a blast. I had such a great time. I really, really enjoyed the private lessons, and I really enjoyed the etude books and the technique books that I got to work on outside of the classroom. I feel like they really helped push me in my musicianship skills. So one book that really is sort of universal for all trombone players it is this book called Melodious Etudes for Trombone. Now this was transcribed or um, written out by this man named Johannes Rochu. And if you look this up online, um, uh, Melodious Etudes for Trombone, Rochu, R-O-C-H-U-T, um, it'll come up with a bunch of different prices. They're typically around 15 to 20. Um, for the first book, uh, but there are 60 etudes in here um, that you can work on, and they start rather easy, uh, and then they get a little more, a little more tricky, and a little more involved, and a little longer as you go on. But this book really develops a great, um, a great base, and it really builds on top of that base for the musicianship qualities. Uh, and endurance and everything else you may need as a trombone player. Um, it really stood out to me because this was the first experience in my um, trombone playing days that I played stuff outside of my comfort zone. Um, playing scales in high school and middle school, that was all fun and playing all of my band music in high school, like that was, that was a great time. But this was a little bit outside of my comfort zone because they're vocal exercises. They're meant for Italian singers and French singers and uh, working on the voice. So I think it's really great to think about the, the idea of singing through your instrument because this is basically, it's our voice and this is just you know, a microphone and a speaker to get that out to the world. So I can play for you a, just a short excerpt of one of the, um, of number one. So bear with me. It's been a little bit since I played this. And there, 
have some really beautiful melodies and really intricate different melodies in here that I think you would really enjoy. So it's definitely worth giving a give it a look. Again, this is Melodious Etudes for Trombone by Rochu. And you can feel free to, to look into it, talk to your parents about it. Um, I know Easter's coming up. Um, so could be could be something something to wish for or if you want to look online maybe maybe uh, look into it a little bit it's definitely worth looking into and trying out um, it really has helped me develop as a trombone player and I think it could be really useful for you guys too especially at a younger age so thank you so much uh, I look forward to seeing you all in our next lesson and have a great week bye bye